Hello everyone and welcome to the CB&Q in Wyoming. Today is May 3rd, 2021 and this is layout update number 18. My name is Mark Pruitt, Chief Engineer of my HO World. Well, I got some scenery done this month up near Hudson, the area where I was having so much problem last month, and I got some additional ballasting done on the yard in Casper. I'm also in the middle of building my next old structure, Rocky Mountain Drilling. I still haven't finished building Casper, Episode 2, which I'm sure some of you noticed. That's taking a lot more time than I expected it would, but it should be released within the week. Without further ado, let's take a look at what happened on the layout this past month. If you recall from last month, and I'm sure some of you do because you commented on it, I left off in the middle of testing plaster adhesion to a roughened styrofoam panel. I am very pleased to report that this came out just great. The plaster grabbed hold of the roughened styrofoam and held on tight. In fact, the only way to get it off was to dig even further into the styrofoam and remove some of it too. Encouraged by this success, I roughened the surface of all the styrofoam in the area east of Hudson. I was on the move again. But I was still trying to figure out how to fill in the gaps. I couldn't use masking tape. That had been a disaster. So what to do? After mulling it over for a day or two, I realized the answer was staring me in the face. Last year we sheetrocked the entire train room and just a few weeks ago we did the same thing on the other side of the stairs. To cover the seams in the sheetrock we used paper tape. Yeah, paper tape. The plaster would certainly stick to that. So I proceeded to glue paper tape all over the gaps and seams between the styrofoam pieces and the subroad bed. I used yellow glue to make sure it wouldn't let go when I wetted the surface before applying the plaster. On the 6th of April, I mixed up a batch of plaster, took a deep breath, and slathered it over a part of the area east of Hudson. Then I sat back and waited for it to dry. Would it come out okay, or would I have another disaster in the morning? And look at that! The morning of the 7th dawned with a good solid layer of dried plaster. Now I could proceed with confidence. Another couple of days and I had the entire area east of Hudson plastered and lightly sanded. Following that, I began applying my tempera slash plaster dirt mixture to the area. Here's part of it, applied but still wet. One of the things I was having problems with was controlling where the dirt went as I was sifting it onto the ground. I didn't want it all over the track. So I took my sifter and painted the sides and most of the bottom with liquid electrical tape. This sealed the wire mesh completely anywhere it was applied. I was left with a rectangular opening in the bottom of the sieve, which gave me very good control over where the dirt goes. After I finished putting down the dirt layer, I stopped work on the line for a couple weeks to focus on other things. I got back to it on the 23rd of the month when I started ballasting the track. Here we can see that ballasting is complete into the corner curve leading towards Hudson. And here we are looking back the other direction. Up next for the area is ground cover and the start of detailed scenery. So what did I do for the two weeks I left Hudson alone? Well, a few things. For one, I attended a hobby show in North Platte, Nebraska from April 16th to the 19th where I sold some unneeded stuff I'd collected over the years. I used the proceeds from those sales to purchase this little beastie, a very nice BLI consolidation in Chicago and Northwestern livery. Now I have two CNW locomotives, this new one and the Bachman 10 wheeler. One or two more and I'll be set. By the way, if anyone knows where I can get another of the 10 wheelers, please let me know in the comments. One of the other things I did during that two weeks was ballast the next section of Casper's classification tracks. The glue in this shot isn't quite dry yet. I didn't finish work on the section I ballasted last month, opting instead to move on to the next section with ballast. I think I'll finish that up in the classification tracks before working on the ground between the tracks. 
The other thing I was doing during the break from Hudson, and indeed for the entire month, was working on the kit that will become Rocky Mountain Drilling. Late last month, I had just finished painting the parts. Early this month, I began assembly. Here I'm gluing on the warehouse doors. This is a very simple kit with cast metal windows and people doors, but the warehouse doors had to be built up from strip wood. They're designed to be glued to the walls from the inside, but I wanted one open to show some activity. That's the open portal in the left side of this long wall. Since the walls are just flat balsa with siding detail cut on the outside, I had to brace them with basswood to ensure they don't warp over time. Then I glued the exterior walls together, adding more reinforcing strips of basswood at the corners. The metal tray the kit is sitting in is a Micromark magnetic gluing jig. I bought it many years ago, but this is the first structure I've ever built using it. If you look closely at the bottom center of the shot, you can see the open warehouse door. Later in the month, I was ready to apply the finished roofing. The kit includes sheets of fine sandpaper. I cut these into scale three foot wide strips and painted the sanding side flat black to simulate tar paper. After the paint was thoroughly dry, I dug out my can of Super 77 spray adhesive and got ready to go to work roofing my structure. And here we are with one side done. After finishing the roof, I made a concrete floor out of a styrene sheet. Since this kit was designed to be built with all the doors closed, it didn't come with a floor or interior walls, but with a door open, a floor was a must. I set the shell loosely on the base and placed it on the layout. To the right will be the pipe yard. A drilling company has to have a place for all those long drilling pipes. Still to come is the loading platform on this side of the structure and the chimney and other details. I also plan to add some lighting, signage, and of course, weathering. Hmm, it looks like that roof may need some additional adhesive to hold the tar paper securely in place. Over the last couple of days, I painted track in Casper Yard. All the splices where the yard came apart for the move needed painted. Here the paint is still wet. I also painted the tracks for the icing platform and the industry track behind it. Here we are looking down the icing platform tracks after the paint was removed from the railheads yesterday. And here's the entire east end of the yard showing all the freshly painted track. At this point, I can go ahead and continue working my way west down the yard, adding plaster ground cover, dirt, and ballast. I'm sure you've noticed that the paint I used this time doesn't match the earlier paint. I took my best guess as to color, since all I remember is that I used a Rust-Oleum brown paint when I first painted the tracks a few years ago and half a continent away. If anyone asks about the color difference, I'll just say the lighter brown shows where newer tracks were installed. One final thing for the month, one of our local club members, Nathan, our current club president, enjoys weathering motive power. While he's not a steam fan, he does a very good job weathering them along with his favorite diesels. So I took one of my 080 switchers to the club a couple of weeks ago and gave it to him to weather, and he came back looking like this. What a magnificent job! Over the next six months or so, I'll be having him weather some of my road locos as well as the other switchers. I can't wait to see how that new consolidation will look after a couple decades of road grime and rust are added. And that brings us to a close for this month. Next month, I hope to progress with the scenery on the Chicago and Northwestern near Hudson and bring Rocky Mountain Drilling's office closer to completion. More of Casper Yard should also be ballasted. And who knows what else might be in work by June 3rd. Check out my website for more modeling information on this and previous layouts, plus rail fanning trips to Savannah, Georgia, and a ride on the Cumbras and Toltec. The web address is on the screen, and as usual, I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next month.